supplementary question. Yes, Honorable. Uh, Governor Komorov, we asked a question about the provisions of the Olipec law, which were struck down by the Supreme Court as unconstitutional. Those provisions before they were struck down by the Supreme Court were there to solve a problem on the operation of political parties in this country. And when the Supreme Court struck it down, those problems remits again. Now we are living through those problems again right now, this red hot minute. So this is where there's a need for us to look at that part of the Olympic law and have it rewritten again to conform to other parts of the Constitution. The problem is still there. So um, I've spoken about this when I was previously in government, that we should look at rewriting it to make it uh, conform with the other parts of the Constitution. So uh, can I ask if there has been any work in progress to, with a view to reintroducing those provisions but written in another way to bring in some discipline? The parties must be given strength in this country. When you erode the strength of the party system and it becomes an individual choice, it's more chaotic to manage than if we're dealing through the party structure. So we have to relook, relook the role of parties in this, in this country. Again, that vacuum is also leading to the cannibalization and death of small parties, like the one I'm a member of. I bring in members from out there during the election through hard work, only to be robbed of my membership by the larger parties, especially those in government. So it's killing off the party system. So we need to reintroduce those provisions to protect the small parties, protect the party system as a whole, avoid situations like this. So um, can the Prime Minister give us some assurances that some work is going to be done to uh, reintroduce those parts? And perhaps the Attorney General should also take note of this and uh, both of them should give us some solutions because the problem is st still there. Uh, yesterday we wasted a lot of time on the, the Christian Honourable bill. There's no problem with our Christianity, Mr. Honourable Speaker. Member, this is where our problem Honourable is. Member, you already asked your supplementary <coughs> question. I can't allow you to go debate more further on that. I'll allow Prime Minister to respond to your supplementary. All right, Mr. Deputy uh, Speaker, me talk a much long member of the Senate. I me ask him an uh, important supplementary question. Uh, long side law, make him a law long, banish him a member. Um, make a try and um, bring him slowly pack law come inside. <coughs> Constitution uh, review, he come up now. Supreme Court, he overturned him certain parts of that aspect of our Constitution, uh, that law. Uh, me like a uh, talk also, me plus two, make him work, but there's a borderline between infringing on uh, members' individual rights. I think something that I will never compromise is right of members to have their own conscious call on what they want to do. Uh, this is the gift of our Section 50 in our Constitution. Now, suppose you exercise in this block good. Members can create him stability if we like him. Mipla, you know, robbing one block member or joining Mipla, per se, yes, borrowing wet long, borrowing wet long member of the No one robbed a member of parliament to join one party. Members exercise their God-given freedom of choice as encapsulated under Section 50 to sit here or sit there. And at the end of the day, it is really what is in your inner man that decides where you are seated. No amount of rope will tie a leader down. No amount of law will tie a leader down. And I don't think it is right for this parliament to structure laws that will tie down members. There must be enough levers in our laws to allow members their freedom of choice, but at the same time provide stability of administration and governance in our country. Uh, we on this side are not reckless. We have the numbers to try to amend to change things for the betterment of stability, but we want to do it correctly so that we don't compromise individual freedom of members and we don't compromise good governance and sanity of leadership. We cannot give one power to someone to abuse even into the future. That is something that we're finding a fair and fine balance so that democracy is maintained in its fullest, uh, giving respect. And at the heart of democracy is really individual's choice. And I want to give assurance to this House, whilst we look at all the aspects of law to make it and uh, entrench stability, really at the end of the day, stability is in the heart of each member of parliament. You only have to ask members who had who had dignity and honor in the 1980s and 1990s. Even when there was no DSIP, 
even when there was no PSIP, even when there was no organic law on political parties and candidates, they choose to remain faithful to their party of origin. And that's something that we must construct. I look forward to the recommendations from the member for Sina Sina. You are one of our most brilliant MPs in both sides of the House. Uh, if you feel that this should be contributed upon, uh, please, by all measure, contribute in writing. Let's work together as a bipartisan. We are approaching 50th anniversary of our nation. We know the hindsight weaknesses. Let's construct a better foresight for our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.